Hey everyone, it's Zara and I am back to show you the overview of my 2024 reading journal and kind of talk about changes I'm making to my reading journal for 2024. I really enjoyed doing my planner in 2023. It was the first year I actually, I kind of like physically tracked my books and when I was reading things and what I liked about them. And I of course wanted to continue it in 2024, but there were things that I wanted to make changes on, changes that just are happening naturally. So let's get into it. First biggest change, previously I had two planners, uh, which was a little bit awkward throughout the year. The problem was, um, so for my 2023 journal, this is the setup I used. I love this cover. I, and then the discs, they're mini discs, so there's not room for expansion, but the colors are so fun and I don't have other rainbow discs to kind of change it. So that was the main reason that I kept it in two bits because I, I wanted some monthly tracking, but like I said, it, this cover and uh, disc setup was really, really fun to me. But um, yeah, I'm gonna mix it up. I, I think I'm gonna, I still love that cover. I'm gonna save it. Um, and maybe someday I will get like expander discs to put all of my, um, whatever you call these pages, uh, in, you know, to kind of keep them for multiple years all in one place. But for now, I'll just kind of set this aside, um, for the 2023 journal since it's done and move to 2024. So right away I have, um... Yeah, everything in one place, which hopefully will work out really nice. Um, my plan for these beginning pages, I want to change. I feel like I used these last year to track kind of when I started, when I finished, and I had arrows, and it was a little messy, and yeah, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I thought about maybe doing like mild liner colors to say you know, what one days that I read or um, I don't know. I don't really know what I'm doing with these, but I, I do know I want to change it from how I did it last year. Um, but like I said, I thought maybe some sort of a color coding for how much time I spent reading or just days that I read or delineating if I was reading an audiobook, physical book, you know, or certain combinations. So not exactly sure how this one's gonna turn out, but um, yeah, my goal is to do something a little bit different than this, than what I had before, because I just found that to be less functional than it could have been. So then moving into January, I still plan on using these to put all of my book covers, my favorite book for the month. Um, not sure what I'll put for the priorities, I'll probably just put you know, my, my pages read, maybe minutes listened to audiobook, and um, number of books kind of in this section. They changed uh, these pages, and yeah, I kind of, I think I liked the old currently type page better for how I had it set up, but I still plan on using it in the same way. It'll just be organized a little bit differently, I believe. Then I still plan on using these monthly pages to track when I started and when I finished books. So it's all kind of visually in one place. I enjoyed having it visually here better than I did in these pages. Then getting into the monthly. So the biggest change for the monthly, or the, I guess two changes specifically, I still want to do bingo, but I'm going to make my own bingos. The Shelfie Chronicles didn't release her her uh, monthly bingos until, oh, I don't know, like sometime in early December. And in December, I was doing a no spend for stickers and, you know, other things just because, you know, the holidays are always the time where you spend a lot of money anyways, even, <laughs> even if you don't intend to. So... I wasn't going to buy the stickers because she didn't release them until December. And then um, the more I thought about it, I just thought I, I could probably make it myself. These um, 
pages are dot grid and so it was really easy to kind of draw my own and I plan on yeah making my own um kind of bingo prompts each month and it might be something where I have things that repeat like I always get a book of the month and then I always put it aside and I don't read it or or sometimes I get behind on reading my books of the month because I'm reading other things so I thought things like putting my book of the month in the prompt or putting um we'll get to bookopoly and roll reader read later but putting those in here so kind of focusing on some of the challenges or pulling prompts from challenges to put in here that way it's not like I'm reading nine new challenges and all these other prompts and or you know nine new prompts in addition to all of the other challenges and things like that um, and I could kind of customize it a little bit more to what I want to read or what's going on in my life that month so in January it's my birthday so I'm probably gonna put a book that has a birthday in it or maybe where the character turns 30 or something like that I also decided to change previously I had these trackers as just reading in general, book and audiobook. These are like my one of the reasons why I really wanted this journal again or these pages again because I really like these trackers here. And I decided to change this to Kindle because I've been reading a lot of Kindle books recently, which wasn't the case last year. I read Kindle books, but they weren't my main focus and you know, I just lumped them in together with books. But I think this year I'm going to do specifically Kindle book and audiobook to delineate it to see where my preferences go this year. I plan on putting my to be read in here. Then I can kind of check off if I read it or if I didn't get to it or if I didn't finish it. And then there's a couple of other notes sections where I can kind of put in kind of whatever needs to be put in and then top priorities for the month. So if there's a certain challenge I want to try to complete or a certain number of books I want to kind of try to complete or a book I've been meaning to read that I want to complete, I can kind of put those in here. I also have, I, did, I have these seasonal challenge stickers for, these are from Peanut Butter Taco and there's like a winter, spring, summer, fall. And instead of putting them in the back, I decided to put these on just like a little half sheet of notebook paper um, or, you know, happy planner journal paper, because then I can move it since it's January, February, March, that would be the winter challenge, um, you know, and then I can, or I guess maybe just January, February, because I don't know, I think March is more spring, but um, yeah, so that I can kind of keep them in here. Uh, versus in the back where I feel like they'll get forgotten. So uh, for this winter challenge, a favorite author, snow on the cover, a short book, ooh, I already finished that, a debut novel, small town, or holiday setting. So goal is to get those completed as well. And then I plan on using these note pages. Uh, sometimes I use them more and sometimes I use them less, but I think this will just be good for jotting down ideas, what I want to read, thoughts on books, uh, etc. So should be kind of space for me to put whatever I want. And that'll be all of the monthly tabs here. So then getting back and then like I said too I have um, like the fall challenges. Here's September. Um, I put the fall challenge in there. Um, so all of the seasons will kind of be in their respective spot. So then moving back here these are just blank tabs. I need to see if I can find stickers to put there or they'll just remain blank. Um, but this is where my specific book uh, reviews and then also my challenges are going to be. So first off, we have our general kind of trackers. So this is my Goodreads tracker from the Shelfie Chronicles. And I did just preemptively put in... The three sheets of it because that was how many I used for 2023 and I'm still going to continue putting them in like I did before so here's my Goodreads tracker for 2023 I just put in whether it was an audiobook a Kindle or a physical book and I liked that as a kind of a, a marker to mark you know kind of visually what books I was reading 
uh, on what devices. And then also to, you know, how many books I was reading in the year. I do still, I moved this over from my 2023 um, journal. These are a plan with Elise printable and they have 50 books and 100 books. And she just kind of colors them in. I don't know if I'll use them or not, but I did move them over. It's kind of very similar in vibe to these. But uh, I might end up using this just because I have it as well. Then I have my monthly reviews. This is where I track how many pages I read and how many books I read. And I think I'm going to continue it the same way. I did think about changing it and putting down, you know, different book formats um, that I read or, you know, minutes of audiobook versus pages read versus other things. But I, I think it was just really simple with, you know, how many books and how many pages. I liked that. And I feel like if I try to track too many things, then I, it might be too much for me or, you know, I, I won't continue it. So then moving into, these are my individual book reviews, and I loved these. So here's how this looks in my old um, journal. I have the picture of the book here, the title, what dates I read it, star rating, genre, and then how many pages. Or if it was an audiobook, I also would put in how many hours the audiobook was. And then in 2023, I used this section to write down a quote, a memorable quote. Um, these are printables from P Plan with Elise as well, and that's how she uses them. So that's how I used them in mine. I think I'm going to change up this middle section or the, you know, this kind of big, bigger section. I think I just might write my review or a couple of things about the book because I felt like so often this year, there's some books that just are not, they don't have a memorable quote to me or... If I'm listening to an audiobook, I hear the quote, but I'm driving and I can't write it down. And then I can't remember what section of the book it's in. And then I try to look up the quote later on Goodreads to see if anyone else highlighted the quote and then I can steal it. And then they didn't like the same quote that I would, you know, liked. And so I can't find the quote that I was thinking of. So then I just put in a quote to fill in the space and it just felt tedious to me. So I think... Like I said, if there's a really memorable quote, I could put that in there. Or I could put down a description of the book. Or I could put down, you know, I love this book because of this. So this one I think I'm just kind of going to leave a little bit more review uh, space. A little bit more for review. Um, I also would really like to this year, I, I on Goodreads, usually when I rate the book, I don't write anything in on Goodreads. I'd like to try to be a little bit better about that, even if it's just a sentence or two about how I liked the book. I think that that would be nice to include that in my ratings on Goodreads. So again, it could just be a sentence or two about what I liked about the book or didn't like about the book or characters or plot setup or, or what have you. So I did include enough pages for I think like 120 books somewhere in there um, just to kind of leave room for expansion and based on what I read this year. Then getting into my challenges. I'm doing less challenges in 2024. Gosh I can't remember what year I'm planning for but I'm doing less challenges because I feel like last year there were times when I specifically wanted to finish a prompt and then you know I, I had to track down a book that would fit the prompt and it took a lot of research or it took a lot of time away from books that I already wanted to read and then I was reading books that weren't on my TBR list that I just was trying to read to finish a prompt to reach a goal which isn't necessarily a bad thing but I feel like there's so many books on my TBR I've got over 500 books on my TV TBR I've got so many books on my bookshelf that I've never read and if I'm not reading it just because it doesn't fit a prompt, well, that's not really a, a good reason, you know, not to read it. Um, I should be reading, I, 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 I want to read books that I'm in the mood for. I want to read books that I want to read at that time, whether or not it fits a prompt or a challenge. So I'm going to try to focus a little bit less on completing these challenges. There is still, you know, there's still a challenge that I want to complete just because I, I love that challenge but I'm not going to be so focused on it, if, 
that makes sense. Um, so the first off I have uh, the monthly reading challenge from Peanut Butter Taco. And this one I feel like is pretty easy. You know, it's the first book that was recommended to you, a book with green on the cover, a book set in summer. Like they're not overly specific prompts, which is another thing that I feel like some of the ones reading challenges that I didn't enjoy as much last year were ones that were just so specific that I just, you know, unless I research that book, I'm just not going to find that book. Um, if that makes sense. It doesn't just naturally come up. That being said, we're going to do the Pop Sugar uh, reading challenge. These were the only, um, or I, I bought three reading challenges specifically for this planner. They were all from the shelf, or no, this was from the sticker party. And because she had one reading challenge, well, two that I really wanted to read, and then this was her third one that she released for the year, so I figured I'd do Pop Sugar as well. And again, this one does have some really weird prompts, like, I don't even know how to say that word, a book with leap in the title, um, I don't know, a book set 24 years before you were born. Some of those are really specific and they're going to be a little bit hard to track down, but I'm just not going to put as much pressure on myself. If I finish it, great. If I don't, great, you know, do my best. Um... And then, yeah, this one kind of got set up a little bit weird, but eh, her stickers were, I will say, were a little bit unforgiving. If you put them down, they were really hard to pull back up. And so I ripped a lot of uh, pages or, you know, there were a lot of rips underneath all of this as I was trying to figure out spacing. And then um, these are like bonus challenges, or advanced. So I, that's why I kind of delineated that instead of continuing on, but... Um, and then they also have challenge started and challenge completed. Then I have um, Harry Potter and the Order of the Planners, Flourish and Blots. This is their yearly Harry Potter themed planner challenge or reading challenge. And I, I guess it's their seventh year of doing this. So they're doing the NEWTs or the Newts, which is an exam in the Harry Potter series. And so each section is based off of a different subject. And so at there's 12 subjects, which I don't know if I'm going to try to focus like one month per subject or if I'm just going to read what I want and, you know, focus on other things later. This is the one challenge I do want to complete. I really enjoy the Harry Potter theme challenges. I don't think that they are particularly difficult. You know, like I said, they're not overly specific, you know, um, a book with a character more ancient than you. A book with an old character. It's not rocket science here. Um, includes multiple parts, you know. There's not, um, they're not overly difficult, if that makes sense. I like the, the challenge level on it. I feel like it's attainable, even if I'm a mood reader. And then on the report card at the end, you grade yourself based on how many prompts you completed. So if you only did one prompt, you get a troll. If you got all of the prompts plus the extra prompt, which is this first box, then you get an O for outstanding. So I just think it's super fun. I, I love how it's all themed out. I love how she did it this year. It was super easy to lay out, lay out in my planner, very satisfying. So uh, definitely excited for this one. I think this is gonna be really great. And then the other one that I also would not mind to finish uh, this is the Taylor Swift planner, or uh, reading challenge. I'm not sure who came up with the reading challenge, but the sticker party had stickers for it. And then each um, room in the lover house has a prompt. So all of the different eras, plus some extras. So for Midnight's, you have Midnight Rain, Time in the Title. For Red, you have for 22 you have a number on the cover so again nothing super outlandish in terms of trying to finish them all and then when you're done you just put these stickers onto the lover house to build your house so it looks really cute I think it'll be really cute when it's all done um again nothing too crazy then I had this peanut butter taco. I had these stickers. I had bought a lot of peanut butter taco stickers hmm, 
maybe like two years ago she had a clearance sale and just had different grab bags with reading stickers or various stickers from her shop and so I ended up with I think I might have even like two of these in my collection so I decided to put one of them in my planner and then these were extra boxes from the Shelfie Chronicles um, stickers that I had last year and again just kind of different prompts nothing too crazy there's not too many of them and like I said I had them in my collection so I figured I'd put them in um, I have the A to Z reading challenge this one is from the Shelfie Chronicles she had an anniversary sale in the summer so I got some of her non-dated challenges that'll end up here in my planner but like I said all of the dated challenges that she did specifically for 2024 I didn't buy because I was on a no spend I also have this genre challenge from the Shelfie Chronicles. So, you know, self-help, young adult, poetry, paranormal, dystopian. May not read them all, but I have it here in case I do. Then I have read the dates. I mentioned in my December uh, kind of wrap-up video that I do want to track the states, you know, what book I read. But I think it'd be also interesting to read if you, you know, you've already got Alaska checked off, but you read a second book about Alaska, you know, putting a tally of like how many books you've read that are set in that state, because I feel like, I don't know, you know, just depending on what you're reading, you might end up with a lot of books set in a state or more books set in a particular state than you thought. So for me, I think I'm going to track the book but I'm also going to track or you know the first book I read in that state but I think I'm also going to keep a tally of other books set in that state as well and then I also do have this uh map kind of cut out to go with it this year so then I can color in when I read the states as well just for an extra you know fun touch I also think that the sticker would be great for other travel themed spreads so like you know, traveling to all 50 states, etc. But she had, has it as an add-on for this challenge specifically. Then I have, again from the Shelfie Chronicles, I have the Thriller Mystery Challenge. So I have um, just different mystery thriller prompts, which that is my favorite genre, so I do really enjoy, enjoy this. I think I'll get far on that just naturally. Same with, I have this same set of stickers in my last planner for 2023 but I had an extra copy because of grab bags from peanut butter taco for the thriller challenge so again just um more thriller mystery prompts and then I moved over my read the screen um books these are ones that I have yeah just books that I've read that I also want to see the movie or the tv show um, or rewatch. So I reread The Hunger Games in 2023. I'm currently working on rereading the Harry Potter books. So uh, as I make it through, then I can kind of check off when I've reread, re rewatched, etc. So those are all of the kind of traditional prompt based ones. And then I have some that are more uh, kind of like game based. So I have a book bingo. I had this one last year. It's a printable from print plan with Elise and I just never filled it out I just never got to it because I had so many other challenges so for this year I filled it out and I tried to fill it out with things that were kind of relevant to me or things that I liked so um you know read a book in one day a yellow cover finish a series because I have so many series that I've started and I just haven't finished read a book on vacation uh, my birthday you know celebrates a birthday uh, set in Wisconsin, references Taylor Swift, um, been on yourself forever. So just kind of fun prompts that aren't necessarily in your kind of run on the mill or like big reading challenges because they're more specific to me or things that I like. Um, so that one is bingo. I also have this book Tetris that I bought from, I believe from the Shelfie Chronicles. It I think it's from the Shelfie Chronicles. If not, it's from Peanut Butter Taco, but I believe it's the Shelfie Chronicles. And I decided to do a genre book Tetris. So romance, memoir, mystery, thriller, fantasy, and then just other. And then I can kind of color this in and see how, how I do. Then I have a 
game from peanut butter taco again this is one that i had from a little while ago and essentially you i don't really know what, how you do it if you if you pick a color first and then you and then you roll the dice piece off of that is i think how you do it um but yeah you roll your dice and then um like if you roll a three published during your birthday month so um, just kind of gives you some different prompts. It's a game, so you could, you know, play it multiple times or multiple years. Um, but I just thought this one was really fun. So, um, yeah, and like I said, I had it, so why not use it? Especially since I was not going to be buying a lot of new challenges um, because I was trying to um, be on a no spend for December, which I did succeed at. Um, and then I just put... The different boxes these are boxes from mojo jojo plans um so that i can kind of put on when i read things and i'll probably write what number i roll two but my goal is to read one or two roll your reads per month if possible and then again bookopoly is another game so this is a, a similar one but you're playing monopoly so um you're essentially rolling and moving to a different space on the Monopoly board and then, or Bookopoly board, and then whatever you land on has a different prompt or a challenge or a rule. So, um, you know, if you land on, found on social media, then you can go here. Oh, oh that's a different green? Oh, I guess I don't know. Well, I guess I... Well, I'll figure that out. I was going to say, this one found on social media actually doesn't show up here, but I'll figure it out. So, yeah, essentially, um, you know, just kind of another game-based um, prompt selector kind of a thing. And again, not, not focusing on finishing Bookopoly, but I think it'd be fun to do, you know, one or two books a month just for fun. So that is everything that I have in my reading journal plans to do in 2024. Um, like I said, some of the big, big changes are how I'm going to rate my books or, you know, do uh, this section here. Um, planning on putting notes a little bit differently, changing up a couple of the pages, doing less challenges or less prompts just so I can focus on my actual TBR and what I'm in the mood to read. But I think it'll still be fun. I think I'll still read a lot. My goal for Goodreads is 105 books. I read 111 books in 2023. So I figure 105 is probably a good, good estimate and we'll see where I end up. But I hope you enjoyed and I will see you back for my next video when I finish all of my January reads. Thanks for watching.